For question three, we are talking about different plate boundaries and the stresses that we see at the plate boundaries. This is going to be something you have to know forwards and backwards, have to reproduce. So if you struggled with this one, please come see me. Um, watch this video several times. You have to be able to reproduce these drawings um, on a whim. So our first scenario is a convergent plate boundary. Uh, we're going to be doing our faults uh, de depicted as thrust faults. So to do this, right, you can have your subducting plate, usually it's our subducting oceanic plate, going beneath our continental plate. As our force is going this way, right, you can have our thrust faults going like this, our compressional setting. Ultimately, it's resulting in the formation of mountains. So you'll have a fault with a thrust here. Um, again, very simple, something like this, diverge or convergent plate boundary, subduction slab, thrust faults, um, and that's what you're going for there. Our divergent plate boundary, we're looking for normal faults. We'll do this as part of a rift valley. So this is a continental divergent plate boundary. Um, normal faults, remember they go about 30 degrees. So we'll have normal faults on both sides where the hanging wall drops relative to the foot wall. And overall a tension setting. So those are our normal faults. Um, and then a transform boundary. Looking from the top down is the best way to do this. Where you have one block sliding past another block. Now in terms of the thickness um, on each, at each of these scenarios, uh, scenario one, our continental convergent boundary, we are um, thickening, which means the magnitude of the principal stresses increases. So you're going to have overall increasing forces um, vertically and horizontally as you're thickening the crust. Our second scenario, our divergent plate boundary, we are thinning the crust, which the reduces the overall magnitude of our principal stresses. Right, there's less crust, we're thinning the crust, so there's less gravity, right, there's less mass for the gravity to pull down. It's also um, easier to pull crust apart than it is to push it together. And then for our final one, convergent, right, we call this a conservative boundary. So the magnitude basically remains the same. Right, it builds right before the earthquake, but it, it builds about the same amount. Now in terms of can mountain belts grow in height forever, this is a big no. Right, uh, rock only has a certain strength. Rock can only hold so much. We've seen with this with the Coulomb failure. Uh, I showed you guys a classic example of this. The Himalayas are too tall, they cannot support themselves, so they are uh, mechanically failing and basically flowing out into South Ch Southeast China. So. Um, rocks can, mountain belts cannot continuously grow. Um, they are not mechanically strong enough to do that. 